legacy. Now you see here, my dear viewer, legacy is a big word. A word that can hold many different meanings to a variety of different people. From race, to gender, sexuality, background, experience, fictional or non-fictional. Legacy is a word that overshadows all, and a word that in some way, shape, or form, every single person is striving for. Rather that be in the shape of monetary or generational fame or fortune, to leaving a mark on the history of this world so substantial that your name will always carry on, or even counting pennies in your basement on the path to becoming one of the biggest internet influencers of all time. And while obviously there are a spectrum of extremes within my examples, the point of that soliloquy is that legacy is not something that comes cheap. And hardly are feats of such momentous task and extreme pressure put upon one's self-accomplished glow. Which seemingly leads to the topic of today's discussion, legacy characters. You see, legacy characters are not grown on trees. And while the definition of legacy itself can be interpreted in many different ways due to the eye of the beholder, it's kind of hard to put a definition on it itself. You really just know. You as a studio executive, and most importantly, you as an audience member. For example, in my lifetime alone, I would say the only characters that have traversed the mountain of character growth, character development, and fan appreciation to achieve such a feat only known as legacy have been characters like Iron Man, Captain America, Neo, John Wick, and Captain Jack Sparrow. Some of which aren't even original characters, but will continue to live on as their respective actor characters for their specific mark or accomplishment that they left on the cinema world in some way, shape, or form. Actors that are so defined and ingratiated into the character being portrayed that even without pictures in this YouTube video, I can pretty much put my life savings on that we were thinking about the same exact character. As you can see even from that quick test, as an audience member, while you might not be able to put the definition of legacy character into a black and white definition, you, as a fan, know exactly what I'm talking about. But say you were to try, to attempt to describe what a legacy character means to an audience, what a legacy character means to a studio, would you say that it's more of a Captain America, or the Flash, or a Spider-Man situation where the suit the logo. The meeting is so differentiated from the man in the suit in that anyone in the universe can just take up the mantle of legacy and make it their own. Or quite the opposite and say that it's actors that make it the character. But in that same breath, that would be excluding astronomically important characters introduced over the years on the animation side of things like Aang, Zuko, Katara, Sokka, fuck it just the entire cast of characters in Avatar The Last Airbender. Not to mention characters such as Ahsoka, who has become a fan favorite character in regards to the entirety of the Star Wars universe. What about Naruto or Goku? You see, legacy is a slippery slope. And while I can pretty much guarantee that most of you knew most of the characters that I just mentioned, let's break it down. Three characters, three characters in my generation that I believe encapsulates everything about the meaning of legacy. Number one, Captain Jack Sparrow. In reality, I don't think a sole character represents the definition of a legacy character from my generation as much as Captain Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Caribbean? We need to figure that out. And Disney knew that just as much as anyone else at the time. You know, the old Disney that still made quality content and didn't tell me how to live. Just look at his introductory scene. Stoic. Epic music in the background over the horizon. The camera zooming in over his face as you, the audience, recognize that you're being introduced to someone of extreme importance. A character that wants, demands us, to be just as invested in his character as he is in himself. But as you pan out, and you realize that he's just alone on a sinking ship, the comedic factor starts to play into his role. But it's only to us, the audience, not Captain Jack Sparrow himself, still blanketed with the look of self-righteousness and stoicism as if this is always the course of action. As if nothing was out of place in the first place, and that grandiose gravitas and character bravado continues throughout the entirety of the franchise leaving the audience with legendary lines 
character development, and a rewatchability aspect that most film franchises are no longer capable of. A franchise that had no business being as great a cinema as it was, a franchise that was a herald and a gem of its time. Propelled by an actor that stood above the clouds at the time, a franchise and a character that would surely not be made in our modern society, and definitely not our modern Hollywood. And that's a good thing. Number two, John Wick. Ah, <sighs> Mr. Wick. Who would have ever thought back in the year 2014 that Keanu Reeves, yes, notorious good person and fan beloved Keanu Reeves would be revitalizing his career with one of the greatest action franchises of all time. With an already legendary character under his belt with Neo from the Matrix franchise, an action role wasn't completely out of the realm of reality when it came to the casting of Keanu Reeves. But it was not an easy film to get launched in Hollywood. For most of you who don't know, the screenings for John Wick were not great. A franchise that was almost canned before even leaving the runway. I mean, what a dodged bullet for Hollywood. With each up-and-coming film earning more and more money with its box office returns, while the John Wick franchise might be alive and well with no end in sight with potential interesting characters that demand spin-offs, forever and always, there will only be one John Wick. Number 3. Iron Man. I mean, what is there to even say? Much like Johnny Depp with his role of Captain Jack Sparrow, but ramp it up to a thousand. It's truly hard to imagine what the cinematic world as a whole would look like without Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. One of the greatest casting choices of all time. Robert Downey Jr. has not only done the unthinkable when it comes to his own personal life in the era that we live in, dismissing quote-unquote questionable choices in the past to become a household name that children and grown men look up to alike. Like, let's be real here, my grandma even knows who Iron Man is. But that's just the man, and while the man is important, what the character of Iron Man has been able to accomplish in regards to the cinema world is nothing short of miraculous. A character arc that stands the test of time, and pretty much stands on the scale with characters, the only characters that I can think of such as Luke Skywalker and Anakin Skywalker. Two characters with such rich and deep character development throughout a slew of films for audiences to grow and gravitate towards. Propelling a franchise to achieve one of, if not the greatest cinematic achievement of all time with the conclusion of the 22 film Infinity Saga, concluding his character with what is deemed one of the most iconic lines in film history, a callback that put his character on the map and inside of households, and elevating an entire genre of cinema into what was almost seen like a monopoly at one point at the highest peak of Phase 3. Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man was one of the greatest decisions in cinema history. And while the downfall of quality content has seen a rise of fans clamoring for Iron Man to be recast, I can't think of a dumber decision for Marvel to do at this point. And we have made plenty of them over the past couple years post Endgame, but the craftsmanship, dedication, relatability, charisma, character writing, importance, and sheer presence of Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man will simply be unmatched in the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. He was born as Iron Man and died a legacy character of cinema. And there you go. That was my three legacy characters. Again, honorable mentions go to the characters of Keanu Reeves as Neo, Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt, Chris Evans as Captain America, and the one that I felt most deserving of this list, but I couldn't really put it on because I didn't really know how it worked, but it's Hayden Christensen as Anakin Skywalker. I don't know. Technically, it mostly just depends on if you look at Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker as two separate characters, but I truly believe that Anakin Skywalker is the best character introduced in film itself. And a character that I'm sure one day I'll dedicate an entire video to. But of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. As always, comment down below if there are any characters that you felt like I missed. By all means, 
please let me know. I'm in the era of the 2000s and the 2010s, so I don't know. I couldn't really find anyone else. So definitely help me out with that if you felt like I missed any characters. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.